everyone. We are the Good Doctors of Abbey Research. As always, I'm Dr. Kristen. I'm Dr. Erin. And welcome to the Good Doctors Diagnose for Monday, January 13th. Today we're going to be talking about um, kind of a very specific topic yeah. in terms of business and leadership, but one that we'd like to also, in our way, broaden. Expand just a little bit. So you may be familiar if you work in an office environment with the Americans with Disabilities Act mm -hmm. um, and their policy that was enacted in 2008 about the phrase reasonable accommodations. Mm -hmm. These are, um, we're going to read from the DOL website, the Department of Labor's website. Um, so reasonable accommodations is a modification or adjustment to a job the work environment, or the way things are usually done during the hiring process. Mm -hmm. These modifications enable an individual with a disability to have an equal opportunity not only to get the job, but to successfully perform the job. These things can be, these are not special treatments. Um, these are both physical things to the building, like ramps and bathrooms and ergonomic workstations, but are also things like flexible time schedules, um, work from home, changing like, some tests and policies, hiring an interpreter, things right. like that. So I was explaining this to Aaron a little bit ago. We as we're on a manufacturing company as my family. And so a reasonable accommodation is for us to is to buy hard hats for our folks who would that would fit over religious headwear. Right. But at the same token, it is not a reasonable accommodation for somebody who has to wear a respirator to keep wearing a beard. So we had, an inter we had an employee several years ago who had a religiously mandated beard, mm -hmm. and we could not put him in the job that needed a respirator because he would not shave it, and respirators cannot fit over beards and be safe. So a reasonable accommodation would never ask the employer to put the employee at physical risk or to put the rest of the employees in a, in a situation of physical danger. So we wanted to take some time just to cover this idea of reasonable accommodation, but the way we want to expand on it is, you know, while it's obviously very important to main, maintain legal boundaries uh, and make sure that you are legally compliant with the ADA, uh, it is possible to go beyond that and yes. to consider other avenues of being accommodating for your employees besides just their bodies. ensuring that their bodies can work and fit in the spaces that you have designated for the jobs. So on the flip side of that, we want to talk a little bit about reasonable emotional accommodation and how you can accommodate the different personalities and the different emotional needs of your employees within the work that they're doing. And this is a bit more of a, you could say, a fluffy side to the reasonable accommodation, but equally as important. Because it's not just important to have safe working spaces for people and physically safe, but emotionally safe. And that, you know, looks very different depending on what type of work you're doing and what field you're working in and the types of people that you have. Um, but we were just having a larger conversation about what it looks like to have people with uh, different uh, ability needs. So if you have hired somebody who is on the autism spectrum, so you have reasonable accommodations that might dictate a different physical working environment, but how are you helping that emotional working environment by communicating with that individual and about their needs, yeah. but also communicating to the broader staff about what it is like to work with a person who presents on the spectrum, depending on where they are, it could have significant issues with socializing or uh, light stimulation, noise stimulation, all of those things that might not necessarily be dictated uh, in the ADA, but it's still really important to consider. This is the same kind of thing that falls in the category of like when somebody has a really big emotional trauma in their lives mm -hmm. and everybody else just kind of quietly picks up the slack. That's an emotionally reasonable accommodation mm -hmm. for a little while. Um, some things, uh, I was talking to a friend, for instance, um, it was a very, very small office. This is in middle America. There's like eight of them in the office. Um, and one of the women had a miscarriage. And she was very clear she doesn't want to talk about it. She doesn't, she didn't want to have any conversation about it. She wanted to be treated completely normal, but the rest of her colleagues didn't really know, like needed a space to kind of 
be in secondary trauma in a small way. Mm -hmm. And so my friend who was the HR director kind of like just quietly pulled a couple of them aside and was like, Hey, if this is affecting you, like you can come into my office and we can talk about it. And that was a reasonable accommodation for both um, the emotions of the employee who was directly affected and the emotions of the employee who had secondary affected. So this, and like, honestly, most of you probably do this kind of stuff anyway. This just isn't the language you've thought about. And right. so we'd ask you, challenge you as we go now into 2020 and we're halfway through the month um, and we're settling into what 2020 is going to look like. Think about ways that you can be intentional yeah. about planning emotionally reasonable accommodations instead of, and let, and be proactive instead of reactive. And it's really important too, in terms of how you communicate and what you communicate. Yep. So if you don't have agreed upon ways to deal with things like experiencing an office trauma, you know, new, fresh year, fresh start, Let's ha sit down and have a conversation with our leadership team about what that communication style looks like. How do we approach that situation? How do we communicate with the employee that's directly affected and the other employees to make sure that everybody's being reasonably accommodated? So we wanted, we thought this was a good way to introduce this topic. We're going to be talking about it more throughout the year and expanding on it. Um, but for a few quick minutes, we wanted to get you thinking about uh, what reasonable accommodation looks like in your office. So well, for now, that's it. We'll see you on, on Wednesday. Take care, everybody. Bye.